टाइम हील्स एवरीथिंग इज सम हुएवर इज रिटन दैट ही इज रिटन इट राइट सो आई थिंक एवरीबॉडी हैज अ डिफरेंट वे बट वन थिंग दैट रिमेंस इज टाइम इज वेरी कांस्टेंट फॉर ऑल ऑफ अस द फैक्ट दैट आई एम वर्किंग जगलिंग बिटवीन हॉस्पिटल्स क्लिनिक्स एंड स्टिल डूइंग अदर थिंग्स समटाइम्स आई ट्रैवल्स आई स्पेंड अ लॉट ऑफ फैमिली टाइम सो अ लॉट ऑफ माय क्लोज फ्रेंड्स ओनली आस्क मी हाउ डू यू मैनेज द टाइम बट आई थिंक इट्स नेवर अबाउट मैनेजिंग every time when you get so i have like four clinics suddenly if i put a fifth one up for the first two weeks it is hectic i have messed up all the five clinics in the first two <laughs> weeks i'm seeing a patient fast maybe i'm cancelling one doing overtime somewhere else and it's a mess but i think in the course of that one or two weeks you get the pattern So ladies and gentlemen welcome to the Lalit Dano show today i have with me a very special guest again a person who i met at the creator party here i think about a month ago and this person was you know i, I was just able to find her amongst a group of people yeah. i think uh, you had a lot of high energy yes <laughs> that day <laughs> that day and um, i i was clearly able to recognize you and i we spoke and rebecca welcome to my show Whatever I say, I'm supposed to thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I mean that's fine. Let's uh, let's just go with it. You can say thank you. Huh. You could say ask me your first question. Ask me your first question. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do that. Huh. Man, um, so Rebecca, like I've been following your content. I've yeah. been seeing a lot of it. I I realize that you put content based on health. Yeah. You you are also a doctor. You're yeah. a physiotherapist. Yes. Um, How did you start your journey as a physiotherapist? I mean, was it something like you knew that you wanted to get into the medical field from your from a young age? No, no, no. I did not want to. Uh, I had no focus of I want to become something. I just wanted to study well. So basically, if my parents would tell me that you know get good marks in maths, I would get good marks in maths or science because of course you don't have the clarity of thought. But eventually, I think after I was always good at studies, more in maths than science though. But uh there was a teacher of mine in 12th mm -hmm. in and he told us basically he told me that call your father on a talk to him okay and i was not very keen on calling my father to college and everything but he one day called my father to the college and he was sitting in the science lab with articles of physiotherapy from the newspaper cut out okay saying that this is a very good profession and put rebecca in this because she's a very bright student because i used to get all those you know there were these kalina university would be like all science projects and all so i would talk ah. over there and come so oh, it was wow. good okay so these was in competitions yeah okay. so it was very good at science and everything but of course i didn't know what i wanted to do so then he told that listen this is a very good field put her now because by the time she passes out it will boom and that is what happened honestly uh, while i was studying physiotherapy so i just obeyed him and my father but while i was studying physiotherapy we were in the process when nobody knew what a physiotherapist is even if i would tell my friends i'm studying physiotherapy they like acha what is that ha today now that i'm working we come to a time where i do not have to explain that anymore it has really boomed so whatever his mindset was was good nice i mean also looks like you were a very daddy's and mummy's girl kind of a yeah, very person obedient. very obedient very obedient very obedient so you never rebelled against them for anything no that wow okay that's <laughs> so, so so i think our journeys are similar but both of us as individuals are way are apart are you more rebellious oh, yeah i was because my parents again i am very obedient to be honest but became rebellious only with studies oh like they wanted me to become a doctor Uh, okay okay i'm like okay crazy my dad's like what doctor do you want to become i'm like pediatrician because that's the only doctor i was visiting okay uh, yeah. yeah so, so yeah that's been a lot of times i think in our school they told us that don't look at a person you admire and want to adapt to that but i think as children we all do that that we yeah. admire somebody and then we want to become that like that so we pick that profession up Makes so sense. then so so you pick a person you 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 keep a persona and pick a profession yes 
yes. So, so then I said, okay, I'll do it. And then he put me into medical Excel coaching, huh. which trains me to then take up the medical entrance exam, which is NEAT yeah. uh, in Bangalore. I don't know if it's the same all over, but yeah. now <laughs> it is the same all over. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I clearly got 56% in my 12th grade. Forget doing the MBBS or huh. anything. Huh. I, my dad one day clearly told me, you can't even become the watchman or the nurse in that bloody uh, college. You leave it from but today. That's, that's th these lines stay with you, know. Yo, yeah. Yes, when teachers say, I feel that of course there are some teachers who are like very good, but there are some teachers who say something so derogatory that, oh, man. you know, you will just become a bus conductor mm. or you will just do nothing. These lines like stay with you till you've grown up. Absolutely. I, I, and... It, it and no matter how much you overcome it, how much you've surpassed all of these things, it still comes up. It's like a tattoo. Yeah. It, it's here to stay, yeah. right? You can only mask it, but you can't remove yeah. uh, what it's done. So I'm, I mean, I come from that place. So medicine was always a part of my thought process, but never in my action process. Yeah. Then I moved on to commerce. However, getting back, yeah. one very interesting thing that I've noticed from your profile is that number one, you're a doctor. Huh. That means you also have schedules that might not go according yes. to your favor. Yes. There are situations like emergencies where you have to stay your cool. You got to keep yes. your character yes. right. Um, and on top of that, you are an influencer. Yeah. How does these things fit together in you and your life, man? Because on a third person's perspective, it does not make sense to me. So I get asked this a lot of times, forget the uh, influencer part, the fact that I am working, uh, juggling between hospitals, clinics and still doing other things, sometimes I travel, I spend a lot of family time. So a lot of my close friends only ask me, how do you manage the time? But I think it's never about managing every time when you get, so I have like four clinics. Suddenly, if I put a fifth one up for the first two weeks, it is hectic. I have messed up all the five clinics in the first two weeks. <laughs> I'm seeing a patient fast. Maybe I'm cancelling one, doing overtime somewhere else. And it's a mess. But I think in the course of that one or two weeks, you get the pattern. And after two weeks, everything sets up. So it's the same with physiotherapy. And let's say even making content. It was very... Because I'm so systematic uh, professionally. Personally, I'm not this. <laughs> <laughs> but I knew that, okay, every day I cannot sit and make content. So then I had like one day in a month mm -hmm. where I would just shoot for two, three hours, make the content for the entire month and put it out. Eventually, then I figured that doing this is keeping me out of trends. Because say a trend is trending for two weeks and by the time I decide to post it... It's gone. So then now I try and shoot content in every 15 days, but I don't do it on a regular basis. Nice. Unless and until say I have forgotten that... Uh, Diwali is coming and it's out and Diwali is there. So then I'll do that content on the spot. Makes sense. Otherwise, no. I think I just shoot 15 days. Mein. I'll give two hours, do it. And then my most of the work is offline. Offline. I also feel you need to have a nice mix of both as a content creator. Yes. One is the, the prepared segment and the other one is the impromptu segment. Impromptu segment. One, yeah. yeah. If you're mentally ready for that, you know at the back of your head, you, you can always bank on it. Hmm. Here, you know that, okay, you can put your creativity to, uh, to test and then yes. get the right one out. Yes, but also I think a lot of content creators will agree with this. That the ones that you put a lot of effort into know doesn't do that well but these impromptu ones no just do magic and you're like listen i've done nothing nothing oh, what are you writing <laughs> in this video I'm, and you're screaming inside there's nothing in this video look at that one but no and it's usually the dumbest shit that you put out you'll be like ha and i'm gonna do this effortless effortless so you just yeah. look at something and you're like yeah nothing is coming to my mind i still have to post you just make something <laughs> and that is there and i'm like listen yeah <laughs> not fair yeah but that's how it is. True, man. Now, are you running these four clinics by yourself? Uh, few of them I am running. Few of them are partially in partnership with other doctors. Also. Other doctors. Yeah. Okay. But uh, is it e is it easy? You said you're a very systematic person. So I'm, yeah. assume, I'm assuming you've gotten there. But how did you make it easy for yourself running four different places? I think it comes from your personality also. So I'm a very punctual uh, person. Ah. So I'm very on time. Okay. So if it's a 7 o'clock thing, I'm there by 7 o'clock. If it's okay. a 6 o'clock thing, I'm there by 6 o'clock. If at all I'm going to get 10 minutes late, I will write 6-ish. And 6-ish six means 10 minutes, 10 minutes late. late. And 
I have been that kind of a person also that if you are my patient and you are walking in and you have an appointment of 7 and you're not here by 7, you come by 7.15, you're not being taken in. Wow. So you're like, listen, but there was traffic and so I learned that how much I was, it's not really good on my path, but eventually I learned it worked for me that if I let go once. You'll have to let go twice. I'll have to, yeah. So then I was very strict that, listen, if I'm losing two patients, it's okay. If they, it's their pain, I am helping them. I'm not calling them that, come, I will help you. You, if you don't have the value of your pain, then who am I to have value for it? If you cannot come for your pain at 7 o'clock, when the appointment is at 7 o'clock. And eventually, I think when you do that once or twice now, and there's another set of waiting patients who see that, Everything gets systematic. You just have to, yeah, you just have to be that person. You can't be unprofessional. Makes sense. Uh, I saw a reel recently that you put out of you being overweight. Yeah. Yeah, and all of that. So, um, speaking of which, was that like your lowest point in your life? Or if not, which was the lowest point in your life? I've had so many, I don't know which is the lowest. The lowest of the lowest. The lowest, of the <laughs> the lowest. lowest. No, I've not made a graph to that. Hmm. But... No, that was not my lowest. I don't think. What was your lowest? Oh, I have to. I don't know. Is it because you're getting too many options in your head? Yeah, okay. but I think when I lost my mother, that was my lowest. Oh damn shit! So I'm yeah, sorry. dealing with that. Not that was not that was not the point of my lowest. But eventually, when I had to deal with that, and you know, you have to deal with it eventually. Correct. That was maybe my lowest. I don't think I've had, or I must have How had. How did more. you deal with it? You just, it, time heals everything. Is some, Whoever has written that has written it right. Yeah. So I think everybody has a different way. But one thing that remains is time is very constant for all of us. So you may have a different way. I may have a different way of dealing with it. But time is similar. That time will heal it for you and time will heal it for me. So Makes yeah, sense. that was otherwise. My fatness was, I had very sweet people around me. There was nobody who was body shaming. You know, you're so cute. You're so cute. You're cute. <laughs> I was so fed up of the fact that you're so cute. So there was no, it was a very self thing that listen, you, clothes are not fitting, do something about it. But nobody really demoralized me. Or that's, like, yeah, that's nice. Now you're lucky, dude. I was very lucky. Even now if I put on some weight or even then, because I had to work really hard to grow thin, they would be like, it's okay. This is good. And I'd be like, ah. <laughs> like this is not helping. You're not supposed to at least, you know, Give me something that that will be my trauma and then I'll go through it. Nothing. I've had very nice people who've been... Mm -hmm. That's nice. Okay. If not for something of your lowest lows, what what do you consider was your biggest failure in life? Oh, I don't know. No? No. So, I have a very... uh, I wish I were you now. (laughs) 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 I have this whole memory issue. Uh So, I forget randomly things. okay? Okay. They just disappear from my memory. Okay. So, I might have had like a very low point Mm -hmm. and that's just convenient i must have had like a happy point also (laughs) but now that i've grown it's been two years those memories have just evaporated oh wow so i do not have a lot of where do you get this medicine or evaporation (laughs) solution beautiful i can't tell you with of course with friends you have to first give them you know a heads up that listen this is something i eventually forget but it's beautiful even in friendship and all that you know when you all have had like an issue and few months have passed and I don't know what upset in me. Shit. I'm just like, how? Huh? When I, mean, I don't remember, what am I supposed to be upset about? But they remember. Uh-huh. And they're like, oh, it doesn't matter. Shit, dude. I remember the guy in fourth grade who called me a loser because I failed in language. Yeah, yeah. And I still want to beat him up. I have a friend who is still upset that her father slapped her when she was little once. And I was like, I don't even remember. <laughs> like my parents do tell me that, you know, they were strict. But I don't have a memory of... Mm. It's beautiful to have this. Yeah. It's very good. Crazy, no? So, yeah. So, even if there was a failure... Also, how do you recognize failure? Someone has to tell you, no? Huh. And somebody has to... Like, I feel it's like pinning it down into yeah, your so head. Like, I don't you have, fucking failed yeah, or so some shit. Nobody... I don't have those kind of people. Huh. Hey, nah, my people are very good. So <laughs> maybe, let's say, even if I've had a failure... Like, I did put up a clinic which did not do very well. And I shut it in one and a half year. But that didn't seem like a failure to me. But if I would have like bad people around me, maybe I would be talking about that. That clinic didn't do well and I was like, okay, maybe that area, that's a learning that that area I should have never put up and somewhere else. But nobody's ever made me feel like 
got it you know this is so bad and you didn't do they just it, the constant thing that i get is move on do something else nice don't put your mind on to what's not working i think you're blessed man that way yeah, yeah, you really you really yeah, yeah. Blessed. good <laughs> good, good. <laughs> good. <laughs> uh, yeah. because it, it really shows how much no matter how great or smart or dumb or stupid you are it shows that your ecosystem and environment around you is huh. what nurtures you and that's how you grow from and truly no matter how good or bad your situation is because life is all about that it is the people around you that make it better for you without a doubt man yeah. without a doubt and on your content um, um, i mean shifting gears here i just want to know on your content how did you realize that the kind of content is what you want to be putting because again under physiotherapy you could, there are a lot of aspects right like a huh. lot of aspects but what kind of content did you choose and how are you going about it oh uh, so i didn't particularly so of course there are people who are who have studied content creation and all so they have a method i organically did not have a method because i've not <laughs> studied it whatever came to me uh, i was doing it so earlier when i was on instagram i would put those static posts You know there are these oh, yeah. static yeah, yeah. ad like uh, got it, got it. like post. I would put that. Okay. Then eventually I realized that okay, you can put a picture of a patient. So I started putting that. Then reels came in, and I started learning. Hmm. So what happened is eventually the word is you grow. You just grow through it. So then I would see that okay, now this reel is also doing well. So I would do that. Then a trend is coming. I would think what I can do physiotherapy wise. Then do that. Okay. Then eventually. you start getting dms you realize that they really want to see an exercise so then i started doing that so it was basically a process where i was learning through instagram makes sense irrespective i feel that whatever your personality is the reason i tell that if somebody like you sit and make your own content right but if you're hiring somebody it is very difficult because eventually their personality will reflect, reflect on your on profile reflect on it correct 100% and with content creation you understand this that how much ever you make something over na say i have made something you have given me an idea and you you've been like rebecca do this and i've made that if i see it i will not like it because that's not my personality eventually i will twitch it to a way that i will like which will reflect my personality so i think that is not an effort that just organically happens that whatever your personality is starts to reflect makes sense and and i also know that in your kind of content one of the things that actually works is not directional content but feedback based content yeah right like you don't tell them something new yeah. but you rather show them how it's correctly done yeah yeah sometimes it's also telling them the same things that they've not heard for a while for a while Some, like, like a reminder yeah so i i do this thing on my instagram which i recently started a few months ago is peet seedhi kar lo okay and pani pee lo so i just put up a story which is funny in a way so if i've seen a wired i'd be like acha ye wired to teri hai aap apni peet seedhi kar lo so it's a basic thing that we know uh-huh. that listen we're supposed to have a back straight but looking at that so then you get dms that listen how do you know that we are slouched while you have put that story i do not know no. but the fact is <laughs> that these are basic things that yeah, you know you yeah. have to keep sipping water and all so you just sometimes have to remind them i think we all are educated mm. we all know the basic correct parameters we just don't put it to use makes sense makes sense man and i think a lot of uh, action points come only after you go through a suffering Right yes, for yes. a lot of people, right? Yes. Like, take t- take for example a relationship as well. Mm. I was just talking to Ekta, huh. and and I was telling her, you know, no, uh, during that honeymoon phase of a relationship, you don't really see each other's flaws, yeah. but as you experience it, huh. then you go back and patch it up. So even I think even in health, it's like that. You got to get a certain amount of your ass kicked, or got to get something wrong. Something, yeah. And so then you'll fix it. It's subjective. Sometimes even if you see somebody else go through it, or uh in some young very i'm telling you these gen z people they have seen the family go mm-hmm. through an ailment mm-hmm. and they've seen how much the family is suffer through that ailment and they don't see themselves there so they're like a little extra cautious and everything reading on google because they don't want to go there it's i think more of fear also hmm. with the rest of us is it's till your back doesn't break you don't do anything yeah, yeah. true that man so so tell me about some of the biggest problems that you come across as a physio hmm. that most young people go through oh so i think everybody is going through like a neck pain and back pain nowadays 
Mm. So it's not like a uh, it's not a young people problem or anything. It's the kind during the lockdown we have children who are studying in school. Of course, everything was online because they are looking into that you know iPad and tab and watching the whole class and making notes. They have started getting like a stiff neck where they can't move, and that was very surprising because a child's body is such that say you have a toddler or a four five year old, he will run the whole. pad and still be active after a nap and we won't because their body heals that quickly so for children to get those kind of spasms at such a younger age was like listen it's just our uh, lifestyle they say the sedentary lifestyle is a word mm-hmm. what does that mean no activity no activity it's basically we're sitting in one place and working we're sitting in the same place and eating we're doing everything over there if you lock us in a room we can literally survive in that room that was not how the generation was there was a lot of traveling that was happening people would move around within the house also a lot hmm. like if we have to think about people who are living in villages and all they don't sit in one place correct we are if i am allowed to stay here and you give me a tv i will stay here my food might also just come here it's that easy but otherwise i think people had a lot of mobility even within the house they weren't as lazy as put the fan on Mm. they were active enough to get up and put it on for Makes themselves sense. so i think that and food is also yeah more processed food yeah. uh, i i mean of course everything now it's like your real right everything has to happen quickly yes yeah but that is how it has i think it's it's not in our control the only thing that is in our control is to stay active with apps coming in that's delivering your food Now there are apps coming in that will deliver your food within ten minutes. Yeah. Now there there are these you know these marts that we used to first go to supermarkets. That's not happening now. There are marts who will even deliver the products that you want within ten minutes. So Correct. everything is like, if I had patience that okay I will buy my monthly grocery after a month <laughs> and make a list and we'll go. It's like okay I want this I this is giving eight minutes this is giving eight. But that's patience. You need to have. It's all. We fed it. We have just been fed. True, true. I, 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 I also have a very different take to this. Um, in terms of the problems that we are facing, I feel our parents faced health problems later in their age, hmm. and by the time they realized that they had to heal, it was it was not too late, but it was kind of late. Huh. But the good side of why we are facing problems right now, huh. it also cautions us very quickly, doesn't it? Yeah. Like if you face a problem at twenty-four, huh. uh, let's say you face a, an obesity problem, and all of a sudden you fell down, not knowing what happened, right? Like huh. something happened. The doctor says, "Listen, if you don't do this, you're going to die. Or they, huh. Something's going to happen." Huh. So they say the near experience of death or something very tragic in terms of your health huh. will always ignite that positive. I mean, it'll ignite that survival mode on you, and you'll start working towards yourself. So I feel maybe. Do you think it's a positive thing that for youngsters they're suffering a little quickly so that they can recoup and come back stronger later in their years? I don't uh, know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we could put it that way. I just understand that okay, our earlier generation uh, was programmed very differently. Okay, so like if you have a stiff neck or you have a back ache, no, you will talk to your circle about it. or you will directly approach a doctor and be like listen my back is hurting what correct. is this i'm just in my 20s correct and how is my back hurting they came from a programmed mindset where back ache to hai no big deal <laughs> mm. so they weren't from the mindset of taking care of your back health any health unless and until it's severe severe so i am sure that women and men then also would have a back ache because of course they would lift heavy you don't have a strong back so they might also have an ache and they would sleep through it saying that you can't cry about these little things we we don't belong to a generation we belong to a generation where we cry about the little things hmm. but that's even health wise hmm. so we go to the doctor if we see a slight ningling also and we talk to somebody that listen this is what i'm feeling am i is it serious should i go to a doctor they were all ki if it's not stopping you from going to work then don't worry about it now coming to what you said i i'm saying i don't know because okay we are cautious and everything but with the i think we are the most overworked generation i say this quite often hmm. that the generation that we are living in we work beyond our limits and i don't know why we are doing that to ourselves so what if we get a health problem we realize it's an issue but our work is not allowing us to take care of our health then how long do you go on 
do you live to the age that your parents are living in can you move around then that swiftly that i don't know makes sense yeah. or is the pain now only so bad and if you don't take care of it then what that i don't know so mm-hmm. i think once we reach there we'll know looking at the statistics key makes sense makes sense and it's also about the tough questions you ask that time right when you're in that moment when you realize your health is completely on sabotage yes. and then your profession is quite going well but yeah. then you got to ask the tough questions say hey listen like even though i want to, i have a dream of a million dollars yeah. I I don't quite enjoy it like you got to ask these questions to really get it out and sometimes you also end up comparing that listen everybody is in doing well and you are so stable and you're doing so well mm-hmm. do you want to sacrifice all of that to do a 2 hour gym session and because you don't have the time for it and make sense man make sense yeah. I, I, i think it's kind of crazy right so i mean uh, uh, moving away from the doctor side of it where do you think we're heading as a as as a bunch of human beings like where do you where, where do you think we're heading man how oh, i <laughs> <laughs> i just know one thing that i've understood through the lockdown that we are a generation that has seen a lot of change yeah severe change severe change so we have seen literally uh, say no uh, highways hmm. on the western express way metros have come in yeah. we have seen change technology wise we have we are the ones who used to also go to the supermarket and the market correct we are the ones who are still marting things home so we have gone through a lot of change and we have adapted to that very quickly yeah very quickly and in covid i think covid was a so i already knew that we are a generation that is adapting but covid was like a perfect example of it where people started having fun ah uh. of getting locked in the house and then having group calls <laughs> and basically just trying to make it better yeah. and for whoever it was not better or they were not very happy with the isolation there was somebody else trying to tell you that it's okay and we'll pass through it and everything mm. so i just feel that whatever wherever we reach we're going to manage it we're going to yeah. figure it out figure it out yeah i think that's a that's such a word for our generation right yes. figure it out figure it out, figure it out. Yeah. man so can you tell me some of the things that you an individual must do to keep in good shape and health especially considering you're so glued to the screen you're so glued to one one specific place like you mentioned what do you think must be the ideal way to take care of your body any activity any activity that one suits you so okay. say uh, i'm not a gym person i know that about my body because i've gone to the gym okay. and i've not enjoyed it and going to going to the gym literally felt like a task but there are people like say if i push you to the gym maybe you'll not enjoy but you'll enjoy going and playing a football game nice so find any activity like i enjoy swimming and i do swimming but find any activity that suits you and do that activity ideally we suggest doing something out in the nature because even if you do it within a gym or a, you're always there only a lot of people started having these vitamin d deficiencies because of lack of sunlight who thought that will happen <laughs> because you're so bound you're always covered within walls you're working within walls traveling is happening not that much apart from that when you're exercising also within the walls there's absolutely no sunlight so if you're planning to do an activity try and do it somewhere outdoors otherwise that's the only thing just find yeah. some time be active and and it should be fun right like i i've realized that um, i don't know who uh, huberman uh, hmm. have you watched the huberman's podcast no. on on it's brilliant huh. and i and i like the way he associates why we don't go to the gym or why we don't like doing physical stuff right it's because we associate bad stuff with it we think of oh my god i'm going to get drained if i do yes, this yes yes uh, but i'm already tired yeah you're already tired like fuck should i do this but on the other side let's say chocolate hmm. sugar or anything you know it's fucking bad or cigarettes or alcohol you huh. know it's bad huh. but you know the effect that it gives you huh. is good huh. but if you realize even even gym actually gives you a beautiful serotonin huh. Huh. serotonin huh. release yes. right yes. in your body and both have almost the same effect but you still choose alcohol over gym it's it's the lack of not understanding long term goal and short term goal Hmm. Short term goal is getting the pleasure that you're getting right now, correct? And not understanding, Quick. yeah, it's it's that yeah. <laughs> long term people don't have the patience for long term hmm. goals. So it's that simple that hmm. if this is happening and this is giving me happiness now, I want to stay here. Hmm. I don't care about what will give me happiness later. Makes sense. Makes sense. I mean, you're a very systematic person. You're punctual. You're doing all of these things. I want to know how, how much of Okay what kind of role has content played because you have a good following on Instagram huh. what kind of role has it has has it played 
what bonuses or advantages has it given to you as a doctor huh. that not many people would have received if they were just in their clinic doing their stuff? Uh, I wouldn't want to compare honestly because... Okay, uh, let's not compare, yeah. but still tell me. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think offline game requires a lot of dedication. Online game on the other... So offline game is something that you can do single-handedly huh. also. Online game is something where you might require a team. Correct. If you are somebody who's juggling between offline and online, you might require that if I have a patient at this slot and I'm not being able to take 10 appointments online today, I might require someone else to step in for me. Correct. And manage that. So you might need help online unless and until that's the only thing that you're doing, then that's different. Also, uh, I started online to get uh, consultations. My focus was very clear because lockdown had happened. I was looking for consultations. So a lot of consultations happen. But I have also with time understood that it's not everybody's cup of tea to do online consultations because physiotherapy is such a hands-on job, hands -on job yeah. that you, if somebody <clears throat> comes and you, you know that you just crack this and the patient is done and you don't have to see that patient ever again or a patient has come and you just cup them and it's okay or sometimes you just look at them, you tell them an exercise and you know it's done. Mm. All like if I want to crack some, how do I do that online? If I want to needle you, how do I do that online? How do I have access to these things? So then I've realized that you need to have one, your basics very clear. That if treatment A is not working, what is the treatment B that you can really do? So online is not everybody's game. Hmm. You cannot treat everybody online. There is a reason that <laughs> we have offline clinics. But uh, not like you cannot absolutely treat somebody. Correct. One thing that you need from a patient is dedication. dedication. If your online patients are dedicated... Nothing like, Nothing it, like yeah. it, yeah. Makes sense, man. And, and I think uh, it, it's, it's again, at the end of it, very subjective to your patient. Yeah. Uh, like you said, dedication yes. and how how much knowledge you possess as a doctor. Yeah. Right? Like, I mean, sometimes you, you might also have to be uh, second-guessing what they're saying also because they might be saying from a completely different perspective. Yeah. Because offline, it would have seemed so much more different. Yes. Also, uh, say offline, if I am seeing you, I have the liberty of... If my table is here, I see you walk through the door. I have already done my basic analysis that, okay, you're limping, there must be pain. And then I listen to you. Online, all that I see is this. This, yeah. Unless and until I tell them that, okay, put pan the camera out and I want to see you completely. Otherwise, all that I see is this and... But it's fun. <laughs> I'm sure it is. I'm sure yeah. it is. Um, I've also recently come across this fancy word called a chiropractor. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so I, I was so fascinated. There's, there's this chiropractor clinic called Atlas Chiropractor Clinic in Bangalore. Yeah. In Bangalore. Okay. Uh, so so they keep putting up videos of cracking people's bones and stuff like there, there are sounds that, that come out of it. There are, but the ones, the videos that you see have like a bubble wrap. That goes cut me other. <laughs> really? Let's see if you are, tell me. Okay, when you break your knuckle. Okay, I'm putting very common sense here. When you break a knuckle, you hear the sound. Yeah. Can the person sitting there hear the sound? I don't know. No, you break a <laughs> knuckle in <laughs> Then if someone's sitting in the room okay. and the camera's panned a little far and you break a knuckle, will the camera hold the sound like we hear cut, 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 cut? It's such defined sound. Yeah. It, it, I know. I like the sound that I could hear it's was so... defined. The sound is not... So if I am here and I go to the camera and I like break a knuckle, okay? The knuckle breaking sound is very little. Somebody next to you might realize Shit. it. You might not. So it's basically... But it's not wrong. It's oh! Not, Shit! I want to say, in my, in my defense, it's not wrong. Because they want to show you that doing this gives you a crack. Now, if they do not do the bubble wrap, you will not hear anything and you will not know what's happening. Dude, you shouldn't have done this to me, dude. <laughs> Shit, you shouldn't have done this to me. You yeah, shouldn't have. Bubble. You didn't figure that out. No. You, how do you do podcasts? You don't understand your sound. No, I'm kidding. Well, I'm just a beginner. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, so yeah. Uh, dude, shit, that's mad level selling, dude. It is, but then it's right also on their path because some people show you self-cracking. Oh. So now if I am going to do cut and I hear the sound and you don't hear anything, you're not going to buy it. <laughs> I have heard the cut. Somebody next to me has heard yeah, the crack. Yeah. 
if you have not Makes heard sense. a nice crisp sound you're not going to buy it and i'm just trying to help you so then they do a bubble wrap ta 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 dude i was so sold with that sound i'm like shit are yaar imagine if they go on my back some 100 times i listen to the same crack no. so i was like oh <laughs> 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 it's like you exploded a bubble in my head now oh Hena? shit <laughs> 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 Man, no, but yeah. Sure. But also, chiropractic is uh, so. Even I've done a course. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had a UK, uh, a teacher from UK coming and teaching us, and also I've done a recent course in Hyderabad, also from someone international. So, basically, uh, it's beautiful. Okay? okay. To get cracked as well as crack somebody, it's beautiful. <laughs> but we were also been thought that it's very addictive. Oh. So I've never cracked a knuckle because I don't know why. Really? Yeah, I was told not to. I was obedient. I never cracked a knuckle. <sighs> so now if somebody cracks it, it hurts. But I have friends who crack their knuckles, or they do something like this. Okay. Ah. Uh. And till they don't do that, they don't feel free. So it's oh. very addictive. Your body forgets how to loosen your joints up unless and until you don't crack it. Oh, okay, muscle memory. Is Mus- this? M- yeah. So now, if you are somebody who's crack, you, if you're feeling stiffness, the first thing you'll do is you'll go crack it. Oh, Or if they're feeling something shit. in the elbow, they'll look yeah, cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got so it. Got it. It becomes addictive, and your uh, joints don't understand how to release it by itself, and they'll just be stiff. And then one day again, you'll go and. Mm. Also, shit, also yeah. another thing about huh? chiropractic is that um, it cannot be done in every case. Okay. So we were being taught this, and it, which is right that you can only do it in certain cases. You cannot do, do it in anything and everything, and you cannot be doing repeatedly. You Got have it. to really treat them, send them off, let them come back after five six days. Hmm. Don't constantly keep calling them. And nowadays, I have heard in gyms and all, they like sit and crack you after yeah. your gym session yeah. every day. There's like a cracking session. <laughs> Dude, I'll tell you the gym thing is another mafia level yeah, business only yeah, which I don't yeah. want to talk about. I know people who tell me. I know this girl who had come to shoot me. She told me in my gym, so they do every day. Is it not okay? I said now that you are in it, I don't want to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> You're in it already. Yeah, yeah, like I mean, now if you stop it, there's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> But oh, a shit. lot of gyms do this. Yeah, yeah. man, fuck. It's it's kind of sad, dude. Like. To what extent do we go to sell shit? Like it's just obnoxious and crazy. Oh man, shit. Medically, it has, but it's again. I'll tell you, it's the same conversation that we are having. Whatever is quick and easy. Don't you think popping pills is also the same? Popping what pills? Anything. Like, like I mean, this is my this as a consumer. Huh. Uh, like last year was one year where no matter what I went huh. through, I tried everything Ayurvedic. Huh. I've done even this process called pancha karma in ayurveda mm. which is like cleansing my body from the inner tissue uh, but like I like ayurvedic so much more because it takes time mm. that means it's healing me holistically through my processes because ayurveda doesn't work if you don't change your food habits right there are certain things that you that won't work at all if you don't change right but however if if i have a cold all i have to do is pop a pill mm. if i have if i have a back pain pop a pill right like that is where somewhere i feel in terms of ayurveda there is some amount of process involved rather mm-hmm. than a quick fix i just personally believe that listen everybody is different mm-hmm. for somebody ayurveda might work for that person maybe homeopathy might not for somebody homeopathy might work for them ayurveda might not maybe you are in a body where allopathy is your relief you don't have the time so i really feel it's very subjective and i've never stopped people from whatever type of treatment that they are doing But when we talk about popping pills, that's the only thing that's not sold, uh, is never marketed. There's never a painkiller that is marketed hmm. in an ad. Is it because of the law? It's, it's also you cannot. It's a drug, no. Ha. Huh. There, it's basically chemistry. It's a drug. You Good. don't. You you'll never see an ad where they say that pop this painkiller if you have pain. They'll give you an ointment. They'll give you anything that's superficial. Hmm. nothing that goes in your blood stream so sense. they'll not this is something that we learn so it is very if i don't have the threshold to tolerate a pain i will pop a pain killer hmm. or i will take somebody else's advice for it correct but it's never 
market it to us. Correct. That correct. pop this, even if it's a multivitamin. Is it the same even in the US? Because the US has another epidemic of popping pills, right? Like, I have no clue. Yeah. But I think, uh, I'm assuming it's supposed to be the same. So then they must be having like how we have Crocin. They have one or two other drugs that they can take without a prescription naturally. But I'm assuming it's not like that in the US because over here we can still take medicines without prescription. I don't think internationally you can. You need a prescription when you're taking a medicine. Mm, makes sense. Damn man. Here to apna chemist bhi bata <laughs> Sometimes the chemist is much yeah. better than the doctor and himself. And there are so many, forget the chemist, there are so many people who are like, go to doctor, ke pas mat jao. Wo chemist, ko bata do, ye dard hai. and the chemist will give you. <laughs> He has his own share of experience, but there's no diagnosis, no evaluation, <laughs> nothing. They, I'm not saying they're wrong, but they do very symptomatic relief. There's no cre- treating the root cause of your... So your maybe your sneeze is coming out of allergic rhinitis that you don't know, but your sneeze is taken care of for now. For now. Yeah, ah. so it's very that way. Yeah, man. Like, I mean, it, it's crazy, isn't it? And... Uh, I, I don't know, sometimes when I think of all this, I just feel like I have to become one Gor Gopal Das or some Sadhguru. Because it's, it, 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 it is kind of scary, to be very honest. Because yeah. I'm a very... To be ve- not in good health is very scary. Very scary. Yeah. Uh, and, and, I, and I see it on, on a very, you know, especially in my house, a lot of people are suffering from many problems. And when I put myself in their shoes, in, in a place of empathy... Like, yaar, you don't act- want to be that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, I think it's... Doing Ayurveda, doing homeopathy or any sort of treatment or doing anything good for your body, there's a lot, lot of lack of awareness, lack of knowledge. People do not even know what to do when they have a backache. They really reach out to a doctor and if the doctor says do a cold pack, they blindly will do it. If the doctor says hot pack, they'll blindly do it. There is lack of basic awareness hmm. of what to do when you have an immediate injury, what to do when you have a pain that's long lasting, what to do when suddenly there's bleeding. Like for the longest time, you know, when there were burns, people would put water. Then they started deciding that you should not put water because you'll get those boils. Then we figured that no, you should put water. There's a lot of lack of awareness of health. Makes sense. How do you build it? By talking about it. By talking about it. But then the disadvantage of talking about it is that while you are talking about it, there's someone else also talking about it. And now you don't have control over what they are talking about. And you know which one is right? No, whatever, whoever knows how to sell it. (laughs) So there's never, there's always a right. You always know which one is right. But maybe they are just better at selling it. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Miss Rebecca Pinto, <laughs> man, this has been fucking incredible. Yes. Uh, I mean, uh, it's it's a podcast that I truly will cherish and remember for a long time because we didn't it's have like, a lot of prep. Hi, let's do a podcast. Podcast, <laughs> yeah, let's do a podcast. And it just happened. And I'm so glad you agreed to it. Cheers, mate. Thank you so much. I really hope you get all the support, love, energy in the world yeah. to really impact people the way you're doing it. And I, for one, should say you stand as an example to so many other doctors, so many other people who are doing a good job. Um, and you're putting yourself out there to the world to say, hey, listen, I'm here to help you. Yes. And I think givers will always win that way. You speak so well. Thanks. Thanks. Like, guys. <laughs> Join my communication <laughs> course at 8,000 rupees only. And get clarity over what career you should take. Course. Yeah, that's the next course, upsell. <laughs> right, no, but you really speak very well. You have the tone difference. I don't have the tone yeah? difference. It's mm. one. Yeah. But you have that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, good. Thanks, dude. Good one.